Let's make this birdshot pop using just a bit of Lightroom editing. So first we are going to apply some very basic adjustments, then we are going to add masking to add some kind of special effects to this image, followed by a little bit of color grading and finally some sharpening. As always, if you want to follow along, you can find a link to download this raw file in the link of the description of the video. So let's begin. All right, here we have the image in Lightroom and the first thing we want to do is to crop the image because there's a huge area around the subject which we really don't need for this image. So let's go into the crop overlay and I actually want to flip the aspect ratio so we get a portrait image. And I'm doing this by hitting the X button and as you can see, this will nicely flip the crop. Now let's place it a little more neatly. Something like this is looking pretty good. I want to have the eye right here on this line. Once the cropping is out of the way, we want to start with the basic adjustments in the basic panel. And for this image, what I want to do is to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will lessen the contrast and in turn we do get more control over the contrast ourselves. Then let's work on the exposure. I don't think this image needs huge adjustments, but what I want to do is to bring down the highlights a notch just revealing some more details in the bouquet in the background. So something like this looks okay. Also looking at this gram, you can see at this point we don't have any clipping anymore. So that's great. Also, I want to bring up the whites, bringing back some contrast. And we want to make sure to not include any clipping. So be aware of the histogram when pushing the whites slider. Also, I'm going to bring up the blacks just to bring out some more brightness in those very dark spots. And for some more details, I'm going to bring up the shadows as well. So this is looking pretty good. And what I want to do next is to add some texture, giving this image a little bit more sharpness. And I'm also going to add some clarity for some more mid-tones contrast. And let's bring up the vibrance. All right, looking good so far for the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see color wise, we are actually losing some saturation, but we have more details in the darkest parts and we have more details in the brightest parts as well. So exposure wise, it, it's a much better base image on which we can now apply some further targeted adjustments. Now, before we continue with the masking, you might notice some noise in this image already. That's because I was shooting this at ISO 12800. Obviously, there will be noise, especially with some heavier editing. But don't worry, we can fix that quite easily. So what we want to do is we want to head into the details tab and we want to make use of Lightroom's noise reduction feature. So all we need to do in here is to click that denoise button and Lightroom will do all the work for us. Once it has finished loading, you will get this enhanced preview. Clicking on this window, you can see the image from before and letting go of the mouse button, we will get the denoise result. So you can see it's pretty good. The amount of denoise right now is a little bit too high for my taste. I'm going to tone it down a little bit. We don't need that much denoising. So something like this looks pretty good. Now all I need to do is to click on enhance. This is looking much, much better already. Now let's go out of the details panel and while we're down here in the panels menu, let's open up the effects tab. And what I want to do in here is to add a little bit of vignetting already, just focusing the viewer's eye more on the center and thus the subject. So let's bring down the amount here. And you will notice the borders of the image will become darker as we drop the vignetting amount like this. Perfect. So that's it for the basic adjustments. Now let's do some magic with a bit of masking. Let's open up the masking panel. And with the masking, here is where we can separate the subject from the background. Usually in this case, I would start by adding a new background mask. However, Lightroom does seem to have some problems selecting the subject as you will see in a minute. So my approach will be, I'm going to create a new subject mask. And now you can already see the beak of this bird is not properly selected. I don't know why this is happening. It worked before in Photoshop. It doesn't work right here in Lightroom. So what I'm going to do is to add another mask and I'm going with the object selection tool. Here I'm making sure the rectangle select mode is active and then all I need all I need to do is to draw a rectangle around the bird's beak like this. And as you can see right now we have a perfect selection for the subject. However, we don't want to affect the subject yet. 
what we want to do is to change the background. So let's click on that mask, click on those three dots and let's choose invert mask one. And just like this, we get a nice selection for the background. We maybe need to modify it a little bit further. Let me subtract a brush because there are some areas selected in that bird, which we don't really want to be selected. Okay, other than that, it looks good. So what we want to do with the background is to make it darker and thus make the subject stand out. So I'm going to do this by bringing down the exposure very slightly. I'm also going to bring down the shadows a bit. And I also want to play around with the colors. I don't really like the green tones of the background, so I want to make them a little bit warmer by bringing up the temperature, introducing some more yellowness to the background. And I do think I also want to bring down the tint just to balance out this change a little bit. Then what we can do as well to the background is to make it a little bit softer, but we need to be careful not to affect the subject too much because there might be some problematic areas. So what I want to do for that is to simply bring down the texture, always paying close attention to those more critical areas like here, the feathers in front of the highlights. This is where we could have some problems later on with the masking process. So let me bring down the texture even further like this to make the background buttery smooth. I'm also going to drop the dehaze, which will make the background brighter again, but it will add some very nice hazy look to it, which I really, really like. So that's looking great for the background at the moment. Now let's work on the subject itself. I'm going to create a select subject mask for that. Again, we do run into issues with the beak right here. So let's add a objects selection mask once more and just draw the rectangle around the beak. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is, of course, we're basically doing the opposite to the subject. We're going to make it brighter. So let's bring up the exposure very gently. And I do want to bring up the whites quite a bit more. All right, this is looking much better already. What we can do as well is to introduce some temperature, giving this bird a little more warmth this way. And while we're at it, let's also bring up the saturation. I think the colors could pop some more, so that will really help here. Of course, we can also make the subject look a little bit sharper by bringing up the texture, but always be careful with these sliders on those targeted masks. I think that's looking great. Now, with the last videos I did with birds and animals in general, quite a few of you suggested to also work on the eye of the animal. So that's what I'm going to do next. Let's create a radial gradient. And I just want to kind of target the eye like this. I think we can reduce the feather here to really only target the eye. And what I'm going to do is I want to give this area some more punch. Therefore, I'm going to bring up the clarity. And I'm also going to bring up the whites all the way up. Let's see, I think this is looking great. Now the bottom part of the bird is not that important to the image. I actually want to make it darker and thus focus the viewer's eye more on and the head. So I'm going to do this using a select subject mask and then we need to further modify this. I'm going to say subtract and let's choose a linear gradient. And I'm going to take away the kind of the important part of the subject. I'm also going to subtract the brush to get rid of that bottom part on the beak. And what I'm doing now is to bring down the exposure quite heavily, kind of making the bottom part of the bird lie more in the shadows. So this is looking really, really cool, I think. Then I also want to affect the top part of that bird in a similar way. So let's start this with a radial gradient. I'm drawing the radial gradient right here over the head and I'm going to intersect this mask because we only want to affect the subject. So let's click on those three dots right here, go to intersect mask width and choose select subject. Perfect. Now I also want to subtract a linear gradient coming in from the top right part because I think this part of the bird's head is already bright enough. I don't want to further brighten it up. So that's the reason for me to get rid of this area. Then what I'm going to do next to brighten it up is to bring up the whites. Let's raise it quite aggressively because I think it looks really, really good this way. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation for the head. And I do think we could use some more sharpness. So let's bring up texture. And let's also bring up clarity here to really make it pop. Perfect, this is looking great. 
at this point, I think I want to continue working on the background. And what I want to do is to introduce some light effect coming in from the top left. So again, I'm using a radial gradient for that. And with this radial gradient, I want to create a light beam. So I'm making it really thin and really long. Of course, we need to rotate it a bit to fit the direction of the light. And I'm going to place it so the light comes right behind the head of the bird. So I think this is looking pretty good. Maybe make it a little bit thicker, but that's great. Of course, we don't want to affect the bird itself. So we need to subtract a select subject mask from this radial gradient. Let's make sure the beak is not selected. I'm going to subtract a objects mask covering the beak right here. Let's also subtract the brush because Lightroom does have issues selecting the bird correctly. Okay, but that's looking good. Now, how can we add this light effect? That's really, really simple. All we need to do is to bring up the exposure and thus there will be light. So let's erase the exposure aggressively again. Something like this. But we can further improve this effect by bringing up the blacks, which will add a very nice glow to it. And we can even bring down the dehaze for a stronger glow effect. So let's do that. All right, that's looking great. I do think this light effect could be warmer. So I'm going to bring up the temperature all the way, introducing just a little bit of a subtle yellow tone to it. And that's pretty much it for this light effect. Then next, let me also add some shadows. For this, let's create a linear gradient and I'm going to cover the bottom part of the image like that. Again, we don't want to affect the subject. So let's subtract a subject mask. And again, we need to subtract an object's mask to get rid of that beak. Perfect. Now all I'm doing for this area is to bring down the whites. And this will in turn make the bottom part of the image darker. All right, then let's do the same for the top. I'm going to create another linear gradient. I'm going to place this linear gradient something like this. I really don't want to affect the slight effect we have created earlier. So that's the reason for positioning here. Again, let's subtract the subject. And this is looking fine to me. So all I'm doing now is to further bring down the exposure. And that's looking really, really good. So that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks so you can see what a huge difference this is from before to after. Much, much better. Now, let's take a closer look at the color grading. I'm going to start this in the color mixer. And let's, I guess, work on the saturation first. I want to bring up the orange saturation, which of course will affect the bird. And I do want to bring down the green saturation a bit. I do think I want to further work on the green tones in the hue panel, bringing down the green hue and that's just making them look a little more yellowish like this. All right, I also want to work on the luminance. Here we can make use of the orange luminance to further brighten up the subject. So let's bring up the luminance here. Wonderful. For this image, I also want to apply some split toning in the color grading panel. So what I'm going to do is to use the highlights and apply a warm color tone. I'm going to set up the hue, so somewhere around here. And I'm going to slightly bring up the saturation, giving it a more stylized color. We can also use the midtones for that. Here again, I'm going to use a warm color somewhere in that range. And let's again bring up the saturation. All right, I think this is looking really, really good color wise. The only thing left to do is to head into the calibration tab. Here I want to bring down the blue primary hue a little bit and further bring up the saturation because that's just something I do for all my images. I, I just think it looks better this way. We could also bring up the red primary hue a bit and maybe drop the saturation in this case. But other than that, I think I'm really, really happy with the colors at this point. And finally, for the last step, of course, you want to sharpen this image. So let's go into the detail step and do some sharpening. I'm going to bring down the radius all the way while increasing the details all the way up. Then we want to apply masking while holding down the Alt key. So we can nicely target the subject like this. And then all we need to do is to bring up the amount of sharpening to our liking. So I think this is looking really, really good. 
And that's it for editing this blurred image using only Lightroom for the editing. Let me know what you think about this. Of course, this is very heavy handed, but I really like the effect on this image. If you have any questions about the editing, let me know in the comments as well. And thank you so much for watching this video.